Good morning, everybody. It's a, uh, what is this here? It's a beautiful Tuesday morning up here in Maine. Um, I've only got about another 15 minutes there. I gotta start going to make dump runs and different things like that at eight o'clock. So I had a little bit of time down in the shop. That's why I haven't been doing much videoing. Um, we are just balls to the wall in the greenhouse. And you know, it's just, it's the way it is, you know. So anyway, I wanted to show you up here. I got this here all apart. Had one shim in there, which is normal. That goes right down on the bottom under the eccentric collar. And this is kind of a neat setup that John Deere had. And it works pretty good. Um, these collars on the thin area I'll get my, my mic turned on. Yeah, come on. There we go. Yeah, it's 156 thousandths, roughly. And to 210. Yeah, so basically 50 thousandths, ain't it? Did I do my math right? Yeah, one's, yeah pretty near 50 thousandths. So anyway, something like that. So... It gives you a sixteenth of an inch, basically, of travel in and out for your sector gears for your steering. And this one here was turned so that the wide area, so it was about 50-50 on this one. It hadn't been turned that far. Um, you can actually see it's only worn in two teeth where the screw head was, right there and right there. So, yeah, it's been run in two different places. Um, somebody tightened it up a little bit. Might have been me, I don't know. Like I say, I've had this tractor a long time, I've had it apart before. Um, so it's always leaked down this pedestal, as you can see. Now I took it apart, the cork gasket in there was, um, yeah, 119 thousandths thick. And it was broke, of course, you know, it had cracks in it. Whether this was my main leak or not, I don't know. Of course, by the time you pull that other piece out, you can break this awful easy because it's so brittle. So I don't really know if it was broke or not before we started. That I don't know. But I did find out this gasket material, well, not gasket material, this O-ring material, it's actually the gasket for the oil filter cover. Um, of course, it's nice and square, and it happens to measure about 15 thousandths thicker than what that cork is right now. So this would take a little bit of compress, and I'm hoping with these bevels and everything if i put some ultra slick on that i'm hoping i can drive that down in i took some of this loctite extreme glue it's got a long cure time like five minutes so what i did was i got this to fit on here just about perfect and as you can see i tried it several times it wasn't the first time I got it to fit perfect, and then I put glue on it, and I've got it fit in there nice and neat. And I'm gonna let that cure probably all day. And then tonight, at some point, I'm gonna come down, and I'm gonna set that spacer over it. And I'm probably gonna put a jack under this, because right now there's a lot of pressure going one way, because I only got one tire on it. But I'll put a jack under it, so that's kind of neutral up there. And then I will position this where it was before. And I'll drive it back down. We'll see if it works. If I can get that down over that, that'll be better than a piece of cork. As far as I'm concerned. I'm not a big fan of cork. Um, I already took a welding rod and I stuck it down in that bolt hole to make sure that that didn't go through and it does not. That bull hole is a blind hole. So we're not losing our oil there. Now, 
I'm thinking it's leaking around that. So anyway, that other um, O-ring there, that square O-ring, is the um, right material for oil, of course. And I don't have to buy it because I just changed the oil here. And, you know, you put your knife up there and if that's nice and soft, you don't have to change it. So usually I get two or three oil changes before I change the rubber, a couple, three years. Some people do it every time, but I never saw the need to do the extra, and I just sort of keep the stuff for other projects, you know. You never know what you want. So anyway, yeah, this pedestal here, we're going to try this afternoon. I'll be back, and uh, we'll see what we can do there. Also, I wanted to tell you, this carburetor, of course, it runs the balls, but I got one problem with it. You notice there's no fuel at all in that bowl around the outside. Well, that should still be, even if not full, it should have some in it. So that's leaking around that gasket. Now, if you remember right on the carburetor rebuild, that seat area right here was quite rough. And I am going to pull this off. I'm going to take things apart. I'm going to put this in the milling machine. I'm going to indicate flat on this because that's really the best area you got to, you know, register flat on. And then I'm going to go on down and I'm going to kiss that with a three quarter inch end mill. Take probably 10 thousandths off net. Enough so it's good and smooth so I know it'll seal. And then we might have to bend the uh, rod to the float a little bit. That might have been just my assembly lube because I did put some lube on that when I slid that together and I thought it was leaking, but maybe it's not. There's not a piece on it now or, or a drop on it. You know, it's all... Yeah, we might just leave it. It might be all right. We'll know here. As soon as I get some other stuff straightened out, that front end and this here, I'll, uh, I'll run it a couple times real quick and leave it overnight and make sure. Um, last time I started it, I actually had to use a compression release. It's got so much compression now for that extra compression. So anyway, probably a young buck spin it right over, but boy, I'll tell you, I can't pull it right over. It's just like a John Deere A, you know, the A's you don't pull right over. Um, just too much, too many cubic inches. But anyway, oh, another neat thing. Went to a friend of mine's house the other day and, uh, of course, I'd never been to his place with the leaves off. He got a John Deere A setting out in the woods. Went out and looked at it. No name, no serial number tag on it, but it's an A. And uh, it's 100% complete, other than the fact the tires are rotted right off it. But, and it's stuck, you know, it's, but it's, it's all there. So I got a little interest in that. I got to talk to the guy. I just haven't got a hold of him yet. So we might be going for a road trip here sometime with a one ton. If you'll sell it. You never know. I'm assuming a lot there. But it's been sitting in the woods long enough. He probably will sell it. Um, whether or not he sells it so it's worth going and getting, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, that's what's happening here. I'm, I'm yamming along. It's five of eight. Um, yeah, i got to start loading trash. Go to the dump. So anyway, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll be back this afternoon here and we'll see what's going on. Well, as you can see, I've got a jack under it so that it's balanced. So this is right in the middle. I'm going to uh, put the shim on this because it takes one shim. Goes underneath it here. The uh, square O-ring is already down there. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, ultra slick on this assembly lube. And we're going to try to assemble this. Okay, we got that shim down in there. You got to get that centered about where it belongs. I have got the ultra slick on the inside, outside. I'm going to put this in the same spot it was before. Ugh, I'm going to have to hit that with a hammer. Um, yeah, that was tight when I took it off. 
had a hell of a time getting it up off that last little bit. I'm gonna grab that rubber mallet down now. Okay. Now, we are about half inch from the stuff. I'm gonna go get me uh, maybe a big socket to set around here and I'll tap it. Okay, got a two inch socket on top. And yeah, let's see here, let's see what we can do. Wow, as good as that went down, I'm gonna say that that's a win. And we're that close, that hole there that's almost lined up is where it's supposed to be, so I can pry that a little bit. I think we might have a win in combination here. That went down extremely well. Um, I got it down to where it wasn't tight anymore. And you can just feel that rubber o-ring on it a little bit, not much. I really think it's gonna seal good. So we will uh, wash that sector gear up, drop that on there. Um, yeah, and we can tighten the nuts down and all that good stuff. That's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I really gotta show that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this together. Um, I'll also probably run a uh, scraper over this, get some of this build up a paint off of it. And I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, as you guys can see, I got the cotter pin in it. That uh, adjustment ring lock bolt down in here is in. And it's all good and tight. So that's all I had to do to that. I didn't have to pull the whole spindle out, which was kind of nice. <clears throat> and as far as how tight is that, I went out until it started spinning the front end around. And then I drove it one more castle nut. I don't know what it's supposed to be technically. But anyway, it's tight. I'll keep an eye on it because you take that medallion off and check the oil every year anyway. So, because I've never had one keep the oil in it yet. And this one still probably won't. Who knows? Um, anyway, we're going to take this carburetor bowl off. Um, simple. As you know, you just take the nut off the bottom. And uh, basically, we're going to take this over to the milling machine. Um, i got to do two things on it. I'm going to mill under this seat right here. Under the needle seat. I'm also going to mill, I think, on the bottom down here where the nut goes. Because it always drips, and it always has. And I think, you know, you look at that casting. I don't know if you can see that very well, but that casting is always rough everywhere. It's just old. It's had a lot of rust on it over the years. So I'm going to see if I can bring it down to new metal. Um, anyway, I'll bring it back here when I get it set up. So I was going to just set this up and just, you know, run a cutter down in there. But I wanted to show you something. So this right here, it's high on that side. Not much, probably a sixteenth. This piece here, if you hold it nice and flat on it, it's almost level, real close. Yeah, now right there is where it sets, compared to where this one sets. It's uh, way down there on the other end. <clears throat> and then when you look back at this, and you try to keep your vertical about you, um, yeah, of course the camera keeps going off on me. I don't know if you can see that, but that bolt stands right off to the left. And I don't have the nut tight on it. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Matter of fact, the, uh, the indicator actually wants to hold it a little bit over to the right. But, 
Yeah, that dandy is off probably as much as two to three degrees from being flat to the top. So if you ever set up one of these and mill on your carburetor, just remember this is different than this and the seat is different to this. There's nothing on these that was good quality. Um, so what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna machine the threads, you gotta go to the threads. So I'm gonna machine this face for the seat, the needle seat. I'm gonna have it square to the threads. Actually, I got a nut on that. You tighten the nut down, it stops wiggling. So I got a square to that. And then when I get done, I will square the nut on the back down here with this surface here. Basically, I'll just clamp it down on something flat and uh, go from there. Um, I may even try to smooth this up a little, which that should be square to this for it to work right. But apparently the uh, threads and stuff is making up for it because, you know, when you screw that cap on, they're actually screwing into the seat. So it's kind of a frigged up mess here. Maybe that's why this thing's always giving me trouble leaking. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead. I'll get this squared up. I'll be back. Yeah, I'm within two thousandths in an inch. I'm gonna quit. I've been frigging around for a while getting it that close. And uh, yeah, the other way I believe is still good. I'll double check it, I'll be back. Yeah, I just double checked it this way. It's about the same, you know, thousands and a half or so. But you know, this bolt, it's snug. But you can see I can wiggle it a little bit. It's close enough. We're gonna go ahead and machine that seat boy that's deceiving it looks like it's way the hell off but the bolt is straight this surface here is way off so i'm going to go and kiss this and make everything parallel to the threads while i got this thing balanced here well i don't have a machinist jack but uh you know the bolt's good for a couple hundred thousands of travel so I've got that just finger tight, just to keep that from drooping when I start milling. I got this quite tight, as tight as I dare to put it. So I'm gonna put an end mill on, I'll see what we can do. Well, I don't know if you can see that good, but that's about five thousandths, so I'm gonna take some more off. Well, I've took another five. I don't know if you can see it, but right on this side towards me, still a spot that didn't clean so I'm gonna go down and take about another three or four and uh, I might even take five we'll call it good yeah so I'm liking this here um, don't know if that'll focus or not but anyway it's all clean um, looks real nice I'm gonna go ahead we'll kiss the top here real quick yeah we'll see what we can do here now we got the bottom done Take ten thousandths off, see what it does. And it didn't do much. Take another ten. See. We can go another five. That looks a lot better. Uh, 
Now we'll check it out. Yeah, that's real nice. So, everything there should be all parallel together now, hopefully. Um, so I can, oh Jesus, I don't know if I want to take this out of the setup or if I want to kiss this gently. But I got to reset it because this isn't anywhere near um, flat. So, I'll get the level over here. Yeah, you can see I'm off quite a lot. And the machine isn't perfectly level, but it's, you know, pretty close. That's not even close, so. And that way there, eh, it's pretty close. So anyway, I got some adjusting to do. Um, yeah, I want to get this down close within two or three thousandths, and I'm going to take just a skosh off of this. Because, you know, these things leak everywhere. I might as well try to get it while I'm here. Well, I really lucked out. I got this. I actually went down and tested it with three cuts, and I had it exactly zero to zero here, and I was two thousandths off here. So I was real close. Um, now all I got to do is flip it. And I'll clamp it down on a couple of one, two, three blocks or something, anything to get it above that. And we'll do the other side. Well, I'm back at it this evening. And uh, I just took five thousandths off. And as you can see, over on this side here, it cleaned all the way around. But over here, it didn't. Um, you can see that spot pretty good from there. So, from this side to the other side over here... When I headed up the other way, I set this up within a thousandth of being flat on this surface. So this surface was, you know, pretty much dead on as far as I'm concerned, the work I do. When I flipped it over, I took five off. And we've got, I don't know, I can still feel it in my hand there. So it's probably going to take ten thousandths in this inch. So there's nothing parallel on these things apparently when they were machined or maybe it's just this particular one. Um, I'm gonna actually check my other ones from now on whenever I rebuild them because I've always had trouble with this one sealing. Now I think I see why. You know, I could get it tight on one side but it wouldn't be tight on the other side. So anyway, I'm gonna go back down. I'm just freehanding this around. Um, I'm not very graceful at it so I'm not gonna film it but I'll bring it back in a little bit. Yeah, now that looks much better. There's no reason that needle and seat should not seat onto that so that it doesn't leak anymore. Um, we just took about five thousandths off this top bowl. We took about ten off the bottom. Um, and I actually went out here and cleaned up the other. To make sure that it wasn't high enough that it was going to interfere with the nut and the gasket crush. So I took a little more off. And you can see it's not a perfect circle because I just kind of hacked around it. But it'll work, I guarantee that. Um, yeah, you can see she's pretty rough on the casting. So I think we did it a good job. Um, yeah, this here was not parallel to this face here. And this face here was not parallel to this face, but now they are. We've, we've made everything so that it'll work. So anyway, I'm going to assemble this, which you saw in the other video of how to rebuild one of these. Um, yeah, and we'll go put it on the tractor and fill this bowl full of gas and see if it holds gas or not. So, yeah, I'll be back in a minute. Well, this has been set in about five minutes. And this should be still level with the top, and it is. Hasn't gone down a bit. So that solved my problem as far as this seat not holding fuel. It had nothing to do, the old seat used to leak, and I always thought it was just cheap parts, but the damn carburetor wasn't any good as far as the machining. 
So anyway, I'm gonna go fill the carburetor up. We'll see if the rest of it'll hold. So far, so good. It's amazing how much gas these little bowls hold on these John Deere's. Okay, that bowl is full and it's holding fuel, so that means the needle is doing what it's supposed to. We did get some gas dripping, but that's because it was running around where I was filling. <clears throat> I don't see anything else leaking off of that. And, uh, <clears throat> well, maybe it's gone down a little bit. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm pretty happy with that. But, uh, yeah, I think she's gonna set all right. I don't know if you can see that, but it's it's got uh, fluid right over the top of it. Seems to be staying there. So yeah, <clears throat> I guess no harm done in machining them. Um, Pretty happy. We're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna go on upstairs see if it's too late to do an order. If it's not too late, I'm gonna order this tube. And uh, I may take this housing back off. I know I put it on, but I can make another gasket. <clears throat> that thing ain't very thick, and I'm thinking I should maybe replace it. but I don't know. Decisions, decisions, you know? Pretty heavy scale on that in places. So anyway, yeah, that's gonna be all there is for this video, basically fixing the leaks on that carburetor. Um, yeah, I'm real happy with that. So I'm gonna let you go, and uh, if you like it, hit the like button and subscribe, you know, appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'm almost 900. I'm pretty happy with that. I know a lot of guys, you know, they got 50,000 and they're trying to get more, but I'd just like to get 1,000. That'd be kind of a neat milestone. But anyway, um, yeah, I don't know what the next video is going to be about. Um, <clears throat> i got to think it over here and decide whether or not I'm going to assemble with this tube because once you assemble it, you know, to get this off, you have to take the, cab, the uh, radiator off. And right now, I could just take the fan shaft off and pick this off and, you know, braze a new one in. Call it good. But I haven't decided yet. Um, yeah, of course, we got that front end straightened out with a new seal. I'm real happy about that. Made some progress this time. Anyway, we'll see you on the next one.